This is the Pultec EQP 1A3 Program Equalizer. It retails for $3,795 US dollars. It's been on countless records, some of which you might have actually paid real money for. Because its vacuum tube passive design allows for aggressive settings without actually sounding brittle. This is the Clark Technique EQP KT, classic tube equalizer. There's nothing classic about it as it's a cheap knockoff of the Pultec that's made in China and retails for a whopping $348. So the copy costs less than 10 times of what the original costs. Does it even stand a chance of going head to head with it? It's time for a showdown. A Spectre Sound Showdown. So I've been seeing the crap technique pop up in quite a few studios as of late. It's cheap takes up two rack spaces and can sure look impressive to those who don't know any better, like prospective studio clients. The front panel is designed to look eerily similar to the Pultec. So close, in fact, that you could easily mistake one for the other at first glance. Turn it around, however, and it's a very different story. The Pultec mounts a couple of massive transformers, capacitors, and three vacuum tubes. Look at the back of the Clark and uh, where's the rest of it? Hmm, I am noticing a distinct lack of components. Maybe if we pull the top off and look inside. Hello! 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 Wow, there is an awful lot of air in there. It does look like it's mounting a pair of vacuum tubes in there, however, and there is a transformer with a Midas sticker on it. Not sure if it's an actual Midas transformer, mind you, but it does have the sticker at least. Seriously though, it looks like they spent about $25 on the chassis and about $12 on the actual components. So the big question is, where'd the other $310 go? Is air really that expensive in China? Of course, one shouldn't be evaluating studio gear based solely on looks. It's all about what comes out of the speakers. So we're gonna run several sources through both EQs, match the settings and see what happens. Now to really test just how close the Clark is to the real thing, we're also going to do something I've never done before on the show. And that's run a null test. That is where you run two tracks at the same time and flip the phase on one. If they're identical, they should cancel each other out. And just to make things even more interesting, we're also gonna run the Waves Puig Tech EQ on a few of these as well, just to see how big of a difference there is between software and hardware. Here we go.
All right. On individual tracks, the Clark is not impressive in the least. In fact, it's just fucking depressing, especially when put to a null test, because these two aren't even close to canceling each other out. Of course, the real test is how well it works on a full mix. Now, since I don't have two of the Clarks, we're going to run this test in mono. Let's check it out. Okay, clearly the Poltec wins. It's not even close. The null test is a complete joke. Not only on the individual tracks, but on the full mix as well. However, the insane thing is the plugin sounds better than the Clark. Now, normally hardware beats software, and there are some very good software emulations out there, but I do tend to prefer real physical gear over the software. Except in this case, the Pultec wins, the Waves comes in second, and while the Clark just makes everything it touches sound worse. And not worse in a cool, slightly fucked up, distorted kind of way, more in a Crumbs balls that is fucking terrible kind of way. Clark Technique, you just became the bass player of 2BQs. Of course, I've read a bunch of nonsense online about how upgrading the tubes will somehow result in a far better sound. And to be fair, much like that Midas transformer it's packing, the Bougera tubes that ship with it don't really inspire that much confidence. So I ordered up a set of brand new tubes of much better quality from my friends over at Sweetwater. Let's drop them in and see if they make a difference. Now, were you paying attention? Could you hear a difference? Because I swapped out the new and the old tube mix three times each. I just didn't tell you. Let's try that one more time, this time with title cards to help you out and a null test as well. Why spend all that extra money on a Pultec when some new vacuum tubes will magically turn this cheap piece of shit into something that rivals the original? Because you can't. Despite what some self-appointed experts on a forum may tell you, better tubes aren't going to change jack shit about the Clark Technique EQ. Without the titling, I doubt anybody would have even noticed. The null test proved that swapping the tubes out created such a minor change, it's not even worth wasting the time or the money on. Simply put, the crap technique doesn't have the same transformers that the Pultec has, so it's never 
going to sound the same, period. It's not even in the same area code. Let's be honest here. The only similarity between the Clark and the Pultec is that they look the same on the front panel. They don't have the same components and they sure as shit don't have the same sound. One of them will enrich your sources and sound great on just about everything. The other one should be branded the mix murderer because it's just fucking awful. Clark Technique, you stand accused of selling a cheap knockoff to the gullible who think that putting this on their mixes will somehow make them turn out better. The evidence shows otherwise. And for that, I sentence you to meet the hammer of truth. This EQ has to die. I really wanted to like the Clark. I love bargain basement gear and try to feature as much of it as I can on the show. The Art Pro VLA2, the FMR, a really nice compressor, and even the Midas 500 series compressor punch way above their price point and really deliver the goods. In my opinion, the Clark is a total piece of shit and should be avoided at all costs. It's not a clone. Hell, it's not even the last Jedi you can get far better results with a plugin than you ever could with the Clark. Now, if you want to get into hardware passive EQ, I'd recommend checking out the Lindell PEX 500 series. It's a solid state passive EQ designed by my friend Igor over at IGS, delivers the goods and only costs $299. However, you will need a 500 series power supply for it, but I'd recommend it far and beyond over the Clark. IGS also makes a mastering edition passive EQ in the 500 series and a full two rack space stereo tube equalizer for 1,690 euros. Tagler also makes an amazing stereo tube EQ for 1,885 US dollars. The overall theme here is that building tube gear that sounds great costs money. And you just simply cannot get around that fact.